We're on the Napo River, close to the beginning of the mighty Amazon. But we're not in Brazil. We're on the opposite side of the continent, in Ecuador, close to the Andes Mountains. The water that runs off to the east from here begins a journey of six and a half thousand kilometers before it finally reaches the Atlantic Ocean. It's a 30 minute flight from Quito to the Amazonian city of Coca, population 45,000. Our ship was a further 90 minutes away via motorized canoe. It doesn't take long to see that in this part of the world, the river is a highway. but we were surprised to find signs of the oil industry so visibly active. Our destination was the Manatee Amazon Explorer, a ship built for tourists who want to experience the Amazon. We are very close to the equator, so it's hot and humid here. But it's very pleasant, speeding in a powered canoe with the wind in your hair. We've all seen David Attenborough documentaries about the Amazon. The biodiversity is everywhere you look. How can you not be excited about seeing leafcutter ants in the flesh? They seem so purposeful and industrious. Some of these mounds can grow to be up to 30 metres in diameter. Exploring the backwaters in the thick humidity. The atmosphere of life is pervasive. We know we're being watched, but by what? No one knows how monkeys got here from Africa 30 million years ago, but they've evolved into 10 different species.
festivities. Oh, God, well, that was unexpected. <laughs> Today we've come to observe a clay lake. It's a place where mineral salts naturally leach to the surface. Birds need these salts, but they are hard to find. Hundreds come here every morning. It's a delightful spectacle. Temperatures in the Amazon are pretty much the same all year round. There are no seasons, no winter or summer. The trees grow all year round, so they don't even form tree rings. The only thing that changes is the height of the river. We visited a local community centre where one of the Quechua women gave us the lie of the land and showed us how to use a blowgun. They are surprisingly easy to use. Of course our darts were not poison tipped. Further down the highway is a wildlife interpretation centre. It has information about the animals and the fish found in the Amazon basin, including life-size wooden replicas. This one is a manatee. It's what our ship was named after. The next morning, the other guests left on the motor canoe. We had the ship and the crew to ourselves. It was as strange an experience for them as it was for us. We continued to explore. The weather was perfect. Most people here can easily live off the resources in the forest and the river. They're naturally industrious as to food and even shelter. But for some things there is no substitute for cash and that's hard to come by. Some people can grow cacao, which is sold to make chocolate. But it's hard to resist the cash. Some of the money from oil companies has been used to build infrastructure, like this bridge for one of the schools. Kids have more access to education now. Amid all of the changes happening here, it was good to find a museum devoted to indigenous cultures. It has many examples of their traditional tools and customs, and also an account of recent conflicts. Orange bucket to kill. Nice cold.
We were very lucky to chance upon a family of giant otters. They're big and powerful, but endangered and becoming rare. This plant is called a water lettuce or water hyacinth. It's thought to be a native of the Amazon. In other parts of the world, where it has no natural enemies, it's become a highly invasive weed. It's easy to see why. This part of the Amazon is near the border between Ecuador, Peru and Brazil. It's a flooded ecosystem, renowned for its bird life. These birds are Huatzins, sometimes called stinky turkeys. The only way to get here is via boat. But that didn't prevent an ambitious attempt to set up an eco-tourist lodge here a few years ago. It was not a success. Too hard to support and too hard to get to. Much of the life in the Amazon is not on the ground but in the tree canopy. This tower is the easiest way to get up there. It's a 30 metre climb. next to a 1,000 year old kapok tree, one of the giants of the jungle. <laughs> the climb is worth it. My gosh. <laughs> <laughs> 